Fermentation for the LibriVox Coffee Book Collection 11. Science. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Peter Yearsley. Fermentation from General Science by Bertha M. Clark. While baking powder is universally used for biscuits and cake, it is seldom, if ever, used for bread, because it does not furnish sufficient gas to lighten the tough, heavy mass of bread dough. Then, too, most people prefer the taste of yeast-raised bread. There is a reason for this widespread preference, but to understand it we must go somewhat far afield, and must study not only the bread of today, but the bread of antiquity, and the wines as well. If grapes are crushed, they yield a liquid which tastes like the grapes, but if the liquid is allowed to stand in a warm place, it loses its original character, and begins to ferment, becoming in the course of a few weeks a strongly intoxicating drink. This is true not only of grape juice, but also of the juice of all other sweet fruits. Apple juice ferments to cider, currant juice to currant wine, etc. This phenomenon of fermentation is known to practically all races of men, and there is scarcely a savage tribe without some kind of fermented drink. In the tropics, the fermented juice of the palm tree serves for wine. In the desert regions, the fermented juice of the century plant. And in still other regions, the root of the ginger plant is pressed into service. The fermentation which occurs in bread-making is similar to that which is responsible for the transformation of plant juices into intoxicating drinks. The former process is not so old, however, since the use of alcoholic beverages dates back to the very dawn of history, and the authentic record of raised or leavened bread is but little more than three thousand years old. THE BREAD OF ANTIQUITY the original method of bread-making, and the method employed by savage tribes of today, is to mix crushed grain and water until a paste is formed, and then to bake this over a camp-fire. The result is a hard, compact substance known as unleavened bread. A considerable improvement over this tasteless mass is self-raised bread. If dough is left standing in a warm place a number of hours, it swells up with gas and becomes porous, and when baked is less compact and hard than the savage bread. Exposure to air and warmth brings about changes in dough as well as in fruit juices, and alters the character of the dough and the bread made from it. Bread made in this way would not seem palatable to civilized man of the present day, accustomed as he is to delicious bread made light and porous by yeast but to the ancients the least softening and lightening was welcome and self-fermented bread therefore supplanted the original unleavened bread soon it was discovered that a pinch of this fermented dough acted as a starter on a fresh batch of dough hence a little of the fermented dough was carefully saved from a batch and when the next bread was made the fermented dough or leaven was worked into the fresh dough and served to raise the mass more quickly and effectively than mere exposure to air and warmth could do in the same length of time. This use of leaven for raising bread has been practised for ages. Grape juice mixed with millet ferments quickly and strongly, and the Romans learnt to use this mixture for bread raising, kneading a very small amount of it through the dough. The Cause of Fermentation Although alcoholic fermentation and the fermentation which goes on in raising dough were known and utilized for many years, the cause of the phenomenon was a sealed book until the nineteenth century. About that time it was discovered, through the use of the microscope, that fermenting liquids contained an army of minute plant organisms which not only live there, but which actually grow and multiply within the liquid. For growth and multiplication, food is necessary, and this the tiny plants get in abundance from the fruit juices. They feed upon the sugary matter, and as they feed, they ferment it, changing it into carbon dioxide and alcohol. The carbon dioxide, in the form of small bubbles, passes off from the fermenting mass, while the alcohol remains in the liquid, 
giving the stimulating effect desired by imbibers of alcoholic drinks. The unknown strange organisms were called yeast, and they were the starting point of the yeast cakes and yeast brews manufactured today on a large scale, not only for bread-making, but for the commercial production of beer, ale, porter, and other intoxicating drinks. The grains, rye, corn, rice, wheat, from which meal is made, contain only a small quantity of sugar, but on the other hand they contain a large quantity of starch, which is easily convertible into sugar. Upon this the tiny yeast plants in the dough feed, and as in the case of the wines, ferment the sugar, producing carbon dioxide and alcohol. The dough is thick and sticky, and the gas bubbles expand it into a spongy mass. The tiny yeast plants multiply and continue to make alcohol and gas, and in consequence the dough becomes lighter and lighter. When it has risen sufficiently, it is kneaded and placed in an oven. The heat of the oven soon kills the yeast plants and drives the alcohol out of the bread. At the same time, it expands the imprisoned gas bubbles and causes them to lighten and swell the bread still more. Meanwhile, the dough has become stiff enough to support itself. The result of the fermentation is a light, spongy loaf. Where does yeast come from? The microscopic plants which we call yeast are widely distributed in the air and float around there until chance brings them in contact with a substance favourable to their growth, such as fruit juices and moist warm batter. Under the favourable conditions of abundant moisture, heat and food, they grow and multiply rapidly and cause the phenomenon of fermentation. Wild yeast settles on the skin of grapes and apples, but since it does not have access to the fruit juices within, it remains inactive, very much as a seed does before it is planted. But when the fruit is crushed, the yeast plants get into the juice and, feeding on it, grow and multiply. The stray yeast plants which get into the syrup are relatively few, and hence fermentation is slow. It requires several weeks for current wine to ferment and several months for the juice of grapes to be converted into wine. Stray yeast finds a favourable soil for growth in the warmth and moisture of a batter, but although the number of these stray plants is very large, it is insufficient to cause rapid fermentation, and if we depended upon wild yeast for bread raising, the result would not be to our liking. When our remote ancestors saved a pinch of dough as leaven for the next baking, they were actually cultivating yeast, although they did not know it. The reserved portions served as a favourable breeding place to the yeast plants within it. They grew and reproduced amazingly and became so numerous that the small mass of old dough in which they were gathered served to leaven the entire batch at the next baking. As soon as man learnt that yeast plants caused fermentation in liquors and bread, he realised that it would be to his advantage to cultivate yeast and to add it to bread and to plant juices, rather than to depend upon accidental and slow fermentation from wild yeast. Shortly after the discovery of yeast in the nineteenth century, man commenced his attempt to cultivate the tiny organisms. Their microscopic size added greatly to his trouble, and it was only after years of careful and tedious investigation that he was able to perfect the commercial yeast cakes and yeast brews universally used by bakers and brewers. The well-known compressed yeast cake is simply a mass of live and vigorous yeast plants embedded in a soft, soggy material, and ready to grow and multiply as soon as they are placed under proper conditions of heat, moisture and food. Seeds which remain on our shelves do not germinate, but those which are planted in the soil do. So it is with the yeast plants, while in the cake they are as lifeless as the seed. When placed in dough or fruit juice or grain water, they grow and multiply and cause fermentation. End of Fermentation by Bertha M. Clark Recording by Peter Yearsley.